speaking of vocally, I think the three of them, they they contrast and complement each other like in moments like we've never had before. They're, they're all really amazing in their own right. But I think when we put them together and we started blending and using some of their voices and tones as texture instead of the lead vocal and have that built up in layers underneath, uh, things just became really big and wide and like ominous. Everyone did a phenomenal job. What's up, everybody? It's Keefe at GhostCultMag.com. I am stoked to be once again joined by Skinny of Mushroom Head. What is up? What's happening, dude? Thank you so much for taking the time to do this. With the mask, I love it, and I love the I love the studio reflection in the mask. It's so perfect. Um, this is so much fun. I'm I'm so stoked for this new Mushroom Head record called The Devil. Phenomenal album. Honestly, I gotta be. You know, I never. I never, uh, I give it to you straight, always the truth. Uh, I love this record. This this run of records has been terrific. I know it's been, you know, a chaotic time in the world, a chaotic time in everybody's lives, but this latest run, uh, several in a row, has been so strong. And uh, I love the evocative title and album artwork right off the bat. Uh, it's so sick for 2024. It's like what the illness we need, you know? Yeah, absolutely. We, we thought it, it fit really well. A lot of it was very much a post-COVID vibe. And, uh, you know, Mushroom Head is hungrier than ever to get back out there and do it. And, you know, it feels that way. It feels like a, like 30 years plus for a band. Next year's the anniversary of the, of the debut record, which is insane. Like 30 year, year anniversaries are popping up for bands in 40 some cases. But yeah, it feels like a hungry band. It feels like top notch everything. Just I love it so much. It's so strong. Yeah. Awesome, man. Thank you so much. It, it really means a lot to just to get back out there and share brand new material with the world we're really excited to get back out on the road and um actually like i said perform brand new material for the first time I, I, super exciting yeah i know you guys just played incarceration fest uh we didn't cover it but we had some spies there working at the festival who were telling us that uh, you know it was like a can't miss performance for y'all yeah it, in, incarceration was a, it was a blast <laughs> we actually got to perform uh, our first single off this new album which was called fall in line for the first time live and it just felt great man to get out there with new stuff and, and it's an actual stage that can contain the band <laughs> it's a festival stage at this point uh, i know you guys got a big run of tours coming up around the world and it's theaters and you know all the production and everything people come to expect from the band but uh i saw some photos and some some fan videos and uh it looks so sick yeah it, it was it was a really really good one uh really happy with the way like, like I said, the, the new material came across live. It was surprising, pleasantly surprising to see, you know, so many people singing along all the words to the brand new tune, only been out of, you know, a month or a few weeks, whatever. Um, so again, to see the, the fresh excitement on, you know, some of the old faces and all the new ones, it was, it was awesome. Right on. And again, uh, Ohio, basically hometown show almost. So pretty cool. I got to shout out Danny Wimmer. They always do. Danny Wimmer presents Danny Wimmer festivals, top notch. This best America has to give the festival world. There's a couple of other great ones. I did Riot Fest last year, but Danny Wimmer, phenomenal stuff. Yeah, absolutely, man. We're always, uh, really, really pleasantly, uh, a surprise to be, you know, invited to those and just, it, it makes, you know, we've done a few of them and, you know, we see a lot of the same people in the production, uh, level and a lot of the crew people, uh, year after year or every couple of years. So it's definitely been, um, you know, uh, again, a pleasure to be able to do part of those, uh, festivals from time to time and especially like you had mentioned you know mansfield ohio is like right in our backyard so that one's especially close to home and dear to us right on you listen don't be surprised by any you guys earned everything you got you guys worked so hard i've been a fan from the beginning i have some highlight memories from the band live and albums that i love and this new one's going to take its spot i think right alongside the best you guys have done right on thank you yeah the new one is, is really exciting for us like i said a lot of it was kind of post covid vibe so you know you've got everything all the the mad drama and all the doom and then you've got a little bit of hope and excitement and then some you know some fierce anger and you know a little bit of violence and attitude so this this album is definitely well rounded in the mushroom head universe right on uh i i have to single out the you know like we talked about the evolution of the band the last time we chatted and i don't want to retrace my steps but i do have to say on this new record one of the most standout things is the vocals all around backup vocals lead steve's lead vocals jackie stepping up like so huge uh, so many hooks but also 
some catchy stuff, but also all the all the aggro and heavy stuff fans have come to love from the band. It's really cool. Yeah, thank you. And I, I, I really I'm proud of this record as well. And and speaking of vocally, I think the three of them, they they contrast and complement each other like some in moments like we've never had before. Uh, they're, they're all really amazing in their own right. But I think when we put them together and we started blending and using some of their voices and tones as texture instead of the lead vocal and have that built up in layers underneath, uh, things just became really big and wide and like ominous. Uh, some of Stevie's stuff is just, just wicked, man. When you dig, dive into some of his lyrics, he is just twisted. And it is, it is a really good ride on this one, man. Everyone did a phenomenal job. I am definitely looking forward to getting my hands on this lyric sheet. And I'm, I'm a writer, so I'm prone to hyperbole, right? But I got to say, like, I'm a humongous Mike Patton, Faith Labor, Mr. Bungo guy. Everybody knows that. Everybody knows that. But, like, Steve is on some... Mike Patton shit on here like legitimate Mr. Bungle vibes like very versatile soulful but also strong when when it's needed like it's so killer I listened to this thing a few times and I was taking notes and I was like Patton Bungle like wow you know that's yeah. a big compliment for me that's high praise no and, and thank you for noticing and you know we can't say that you know a lot of his work you know his whole catalog wasn't huge influence on us from the early 90s even up until right now still to this day um, and Stevie has a lot of those same qualities and abilities. And um, sometimes, you know, we really step into that Faith No More Mr. Bungle world a little bit, you know, for seconds at a time or just verses or, you know, vibes more or less. But uh, again, it's, it's our roots and it's just it's, it's coming out um, just naturally. But um, yeah, you nailed it on the head, man. Sometimes we're even like, man, that's got some Faith No More moments, you know. And then when you add Matt Wallace mixing the album, you know, to to that equation, sometimes it really stands out. It's like, boy, we thought that tune had the vibe before. And then when it comes back with a mix from him, it's like, holy, listen to that, that shine. But again, you know, a lot of that Mike Patton stuff is early influence. So it's in our roots for sure. Right on. Matt is so great. And his discography, everybody, or when this, when you're done watching this, go check out Discogs and go look at his his body of work. And Jackie also, you know, I'm such a huge fan since she came in the group and she's getting stronger and stronger and like taking over whole songs by herself practically. And it's kind of funny, I think when on uh, when she came in, I was like, oh, it's like the R&B thing with the rock thing in the background. And now I feel on Call the Devil, it's reversed. It's like, she's so strong as a rock singer up front on these songs. And then there's like a lot of soulful backing vocals that I think are very like subtle layering and stuff that's really cool. Yeah, she's definitely a powerhouse, and I'm glad we got to showcase a little bit more of her abilities. Um, it, it's crazy because, you know, when we're writing these songs, sometimes we don't, we're not writing them that, oh, this is a Jackie song, or this is a Steve or a Scott song. Like, sometimes the songs just lend themselves to, boy, I can just hear Jackie's voice in this part. I can just hear, you know, Steve in this part. So when we, we get that excited to where the songs kind of tell us what to do, it, it becomes a, a really neat moment in in deciding and being told basically by the song that you know this is how it's going to go and a lot of times when she stepped in the studio it was the same way it was like oh yes that is perfect for her or i would love to hear her on all three of these and then there there it is she ends up on all three of them that fast you know so again her abilities and just her you know as a person and working in the studio working live on the stage sharing you know buses and traveling just a great person to be around positive vibes man and you know i think the world needs more of that so yeah again another welcome addition to the camp all right we hope she doesn't go solo or <laughs> we don't want to lose the talent like when somebody becomes too great in a band sometimes they they uh step out you've been there uh let's talk let's talk about uh here's a production idea for you because you know you've been driving the band the whole way and you produce pretty much everything so uh is everybody present for a lot of the tracking or is so many folks in the group that you need to just kind of compartmentalize you a bunch of you come in this day you and you come in this day do you have to split it up because it's just too many heads in the room or can you have you everybody know, hanging out you know we've done it both ways over the years and um you know sometimes you do get too many cooks in the kitchen uh this particular album was done in sessions so there'd be three maybe four people working on a session and that developed maybe two or three songs inside of 10 days and we go back with a different group of people for uh you know another 10 days three weeks something like that and come up with that and then start collectively putting it all together once other people have kind of built built things you know with their collective camp 
So it was, you know, very collaborative in the long run, but in not traditional in the sense of, hey, we're going to go in the studio for four months and write this and record this entire album. This one was done in sections. And just, like I said, a couple weeks here, a couple weeks there, and it wasn't always the same people. So it was a lot of fun. We didn't always know what we were even going to do. Spontaneous, very spontaneous. Right on. Uh, hey, 800-pound gorilla in room. Your brother is back. Like, uh, so cool to have Dave back in the band. Uh, you know, I know he's been in and out over the years, but uh, it just feels right, man. It just feels right with him back, uh, you know, irrespective of whatever happened in the past. It's so cool. What, is, what does he bring back to the table? I know what I feel when I, I hear these songs he's on, but, like, what does it mean to you? You know, I'm, I'm glad you brought up Gravy because we were just talking about the recording process a little bit. And um, again, it was the first time he and I had got together in a studio in almost 12 years. We didn't really have anything discussed. We didn't have anything planned. There was nothing written. We just went in. He had a guitar. I had drums. We turned on some microphones and press record. After a while, we sat down and listened to it. And man, there was definitely the meat and potatoes of what ended up being track one on the new album, Eye to Eye. Gravy and I sat down and just knocked out like big sections of that without even trying. Like it was just like riding a bike, man. It was, we were both hungry and there was just energy and just a lot of, it, that song says it all. It's fun. It's aggressive. It's in your face. And uh, man, we just, we just had a blast putting that one together. And, you know, it, it, it was, like I said, we're just kind of like riding a bike with him, man. We didn't really talk about it. Just went in real spontaneous and came up with a banger. It is. It's a great album opener. And props to you guys. Uh, one of uh, pet peeves from one of my other podcasts, the Glacially Musical Podcast, my partner is always like, no intro track is a separate track. Make it part of the first song. I just let everybody have that. I know we're kind of still like stuck on the CD and the Spotify age a little bit, but like albums, if you listen to a whole album, it doesn't matter. You don't need a separate track. Just the intro, come, like, you know, the, the vibe that sets the table for the whole album. And then bang, the track is there. You don't have to have, oh, it's a whole separate thing. Um, um, which I appreciate. Other tracks that I dig, I'm sure it's, you know, right now it's all very new to you and uh, a lot like you're, you know, having children, your your babies, right? But, uh, you know, we mentioned Fall in Line, Emptiness, We Don't Care, uh, Grand Gesture, and like Shame in a Basket and Hideous are so crazy. Uh, they're crazy songs. Like, you know, they're so un... For now, for like this year, they're just, you know, mushroom head music, you know, they just kind of stand on their own. It's so cool. Yeah, I'm glad you brought some of those up because like Shame in a Basket, very untraditional as far as a song, song arrangement, you know, I think it's eight minutes long or whatever. But if you look at it more as like an opera, um, it's done in acts, three to four separate acts. And, you know, we kind of fall into that. You know, we, we like musicals, we like plays, we like, we see things that in, in a very cinematic way. We hear things cinematically as well. Um, and, you know, sometimes it doesn't have to just be a metal tune. It's not a metal band. Can, there's no rules in art and that song in particular was very much art it was leading the way and it just kept growing and growing and getting longer and it didn't lose our interest ever it just kept getting a little more twisted and a little darker um and everything we do some for some reason ends up a little haunting and creepy and doomy and dark we just those are just our roots so um again a lot of the songs like that you mentioned um they, they kind of came together really fast and uh, they're very diverse. Again, you know, you've got some doom and gloom and you've got some big drama and then you've got some like some hope and and some some real aggression, too. So there's a lot of energy on the album. Yeah, it's like a Shakespearean play, man. It's a journey. There's all ups and downs. I love it so much because because I still listen to albums. I don't know about when you're not making music and touring and, and in, the, in the run up cycle to an album release like all this press. I listen to whole albums. I, I don't, I, you know, obviously we're, as a journalist and just as, you know, we're in a culture where it's like single, 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 but I like whole albums. So I love that this whole album is really sequenced well and it really feels like a, a listener is taken somewhere. I like it. Yeah, you know, it, that's always been a big thing with the Mushroom Hut albums. You should be able to kind of close your eyes and have it take you somewhere. One of the biggest influences of my musical career and just even the way I think and hear is it has to be Pink Floyd, The Wall. So when I think about making music and, and art and putting the, all that emotion together, um, it, 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 it's kind of like each one of these albums is like a mini wall to me. And one day, maybe I'll be able to make a whole movie to go along with one. Yo, that's the energy we need. I want that yeah. so much. Um, yeah. We need, or, or like maybe, uh, 
so like animated videos and things like like uh, or claymation will bring it back to that vibe from the 90s and stuff like that you see some of that there are some talented people out there doing stuff like that but it costs money it takes time <laughs> all the planning and you know obviously you would have a hand in all of that because that's been that's been your whole journey um uh, another little bit of production note man um you mentioned the mixing, and I talked about the sequencing, but one thing I really dig is uh, you're one of the few people that actually gets a consistently well-tuned drum sound through a whole album. And obviously, being a drummer, it's super important to you, but also, like a lot, of, I love a lot of different kinds of metal, and a lot of metal albums, the drums just kind of overpower everything, and I like the production value of, of, in general for Mushroom Head, but this record also, like, all the guitars cut through correctly. Drums sound like a symphony, like a beautifully tuned. You hear the, every beat, every, you know, roll, every, you know, little paradiddle. And it's important to me as a fan and a listener. Like, I'm sure the drumming recording is important to you, but just generally in the mix of sounds and how things sit in the mix. And like I mentioned, the vocals. It's really important to not have one thing be the only defining thing of the sound of an album, right? Right. Yeah, no, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. And, you know, sonically, uh, the majority of that goes to Matt Wallace. Um, he just knows where to set things. And he, he knows, like, just even the style of the band. And it's not always necessarily from song to song the same. So um, for him to be able to have a consistency in and of itself is just mind blowing because he does a great job with that. But you know, as, on the flip side, as a drummer, I like lead kick drum. You know, I like violent drums all the time. But that's not how our mixes come across. It's not a. It, it's heavy percussively, sure, but it's not lead kick drum. He kind of puts the voice in the middle of the of the spectrum. Matt also does a lot of Atmos mixes, which are you know massive surround sound. And he does a lot of really cool things, even in the stereo image field, as far as the way he pans people and makes imagery, you know, uh, delays and things move. Uh, he definitely adds another quality to the to the sonic texture, um, bar none. Like I said, a lot of the stuff he brought up is, is, is a lot of that's him. Right on. And then so live, how does how do you translate that over live? Do you have a separate sound of the bit? Like this is what we, we're supposed to sound like in, in any venue. Can you carry that over live or is it a different animal with all the different factors in a, in a, in a, in a, in a small room? <laughs> it's 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 definitely a different animal live just for the fact that, you know, you're performing it and it just seems a little heavier, obviously, with the PA system and the extra water drums and percussion. There's a lot more going on, not to mention once you put that mask on, you know, you kind of feel a little bit different instantly. You know, I know I do, you know, my, my peripheral vision is gone. My hearing goes a little bit away. I can hear my own, you know, breathing, my heart rate, you know, changes, uh, the excitement kind of builds and the, the songs are almost a little more, uh, there's almost a little more energy. There's a live vibe to the songs. When you see us, you know, perform on stage, they're slightly different. There's a, there's definitely a, a, an added element of excitement when you see it live. Right on. Uh, just a sidebar, I don't know if you saw the movie Long Legs, the new Nick Cage horror movie out uh, from A24. And uh, there's a trailer where they show the lead uh, protagonist for the first time seeing the bad guy. And they just show uh, this, this young woman come into a room, like an interrogation room. And it's just the audio of her heart beating with like an on-person body mic. And I, w I was watching this. First of all, it's a uh, fantastic marketing device for a trailer but i was also like this is what it must sound like inside the ears of a person in mushroom head or ghost or gore like you must only like hear mostly yourself and then kind of like the chaos outside right yeah absolutely it's crazy how you become part of a like a character instantly like your your mindset at least for me personally when i put that mask on i change a little bit mentally and i i'm ready to go i love it i love the ready to go man let's fucking go everybody uh and speaking of let's go obviously the record comes out august 9th on napalm records you got a ton of touring like i said heading over to europe for the first show of the tour is uh just happened to be a festival uh, synced up with the release of the album and then here in the states and then i'm sure much more uh you know what do you do it's obviously a whole different out animal to go record than to go play live do you do anything at this point after all this time to stay strong do you play drums every single day Are you like working on the live element every single day yeah i mean you know and there's a lot more to it than you know just just being well rehearsed and you know having everything planned out logistically a lot of it you know especially at my age we've been doing this 30 years a lot of it's mental health man keeping your you know your your mental game straight 
keeping your physical body in health, you know, in, in good health, eating proper, you know, getting off the drugs and the booze, like all that stuff is really, really important. You know, the older you get, the harder that, that shit is to kick and the harder it is to maintain. So, I mean, I kind of got to a point where who needs a lot, of, you know, I don't need half my shit anymore, but again, just trying to uh, keep a good mental balance, you know, same thing with a good diet and exercise, love riding a mountain bike, you know, anytime I can get a, an extra moment out there that I'm not, you know, living in my career, so to speak, you know, that's always cool. And if God forbid there's some downtime, man, I'm all about some Mario Kart 8. Yes, gaming, that'll save your life and it certainly help distract us from everything terrible going on right now. Uh, just a couple more questions for you, man. You've been delightful as always. I always really appreciate talking to you. A little weird one, so if you want to pass, I'm okay with it. There's a rumor, we don't do a lot of rumors in BS here at Ghost Cult, but I did see a weird rumor that a former member of the band is going to try to put out their own mushroom head. Legally, I know that's not cool and you don't have to comment on it if you don't want to but it took me by surprise a little bit i'm not against anybody that used to be in a cool band continuing to do the music they made that makes them happy and that they contributed to but when you start to step on someone else's brand it gets a little weird to me what any thoughts you can share or do you want to pass i again i got no idea on that <laughs> one so you know whatever's going yeah. on i you know <clears throat> Yeah, your fa I, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. News, yeah. news to me. Somebody's going to get a call from a lawyer. You can't kind of come out in this day and age and be like Dave Mustaine's Metallica. You, I know he's angry still from 40-something years ago, but he really, he couldn't do that, and nobody should be so-and-so's mushroom head. Nobody. Well, there's still a mushroom head. You know, I know there's like, there was two great whites for a while, and there was two rats, and there's two, you know, there was two L.A. guns, and it seems to be what, a glam rock what, thing. What is what is there though? There can only be no. one. No, yeah. there can only be oh, yo the Highlander. There can only be one. Only uh, be the one. Kurgan, bro, the Kurgan. Uh, okay, thanks for humoring that question. Normally, I don't delve into that BS, but I had to ask since I had the opportunity to chat with you. On the plus side, new album and all this positive moving, you know, forward strongly into the future. But if you, here's always, I like to end with a wild card question. So, thirty years of Mushroom Head plus right now. 30 years of the debut album next year. Don't know if you guys are going to do anything around it or for it at all, but because you're focusing on the new record. But if you could get in the time machine with Doc Brown, Marty, get in the time machine, gun into 88 and go back to, you know, early 90s Steve and give him a piece of advice. What have you learned over your career? You would go tell your younger self right now. You know, I mean, that's a tough one. I mean, you know, part of me wants to say, don't do it at all. You know, go do something else with your life. If you're that dedicated, you give there's something else 30 years and see where you land. You know what I mean? Like if you're that committed, I would like to say that to myself for sure. But you know, knowing me, I wouldn't listen even if I did go back and tell myself, because you know, when you're that age, you think you know it all. And you know, I hope you do it all while you know it all. And I hope it works out for you because it never does. So I guess I would say, Hey dude, if you're going to do this, just be patient and realize that people are fickle. The world is not a, a safe or cool, cool place to be. You have to make it as cool as you can accept it to be. And, um, you know, people are going to stab you in the back and they're going to tell you what they want you to hear. At the end of the day, you just have to be OK with you. It doesn't matter what they do. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter what they say. So be patient. Don't fall for everyone's bullshit so much you know i mean because when you're young man everyone says yo i can help your band i can do this we can do this you want to believe it you know so uh yeah i would definitely tell myself to be patient and watch out man because people are fucked so so true steve skinny felton the mushroom head man it is a great pleasure to see you and talk to you again about the new record call the devil coming out august 9th on the great napalm records our friends and yours thanks man good luck on the road be safe and keep killing it we'll see you at a show we're definitely going to come out and cover the tour thank you so much man thank you so much for taking the time to do this today really appreciate it so does fucking the world for sharing metal thank you